guys. Welcome back to the Kids Inc. Podcast. I'm your host, Susan Yeager, and this is episode five, part two. In this episode, we continue to dish delicious details about the show with our favorite soda jerk, Riley, played by the great Moosey Dryer. Did you see what I did there? But I'm not going to wait another minute. Let's get right back to it. Do you remember, you named a couple of the episodes where you were the pirate and everything. Yeah. Do you remember any episodes that stand out to you, like, or or favorites, or what do you remember? Well, before I, I, I do have a favorite or two, I believe, but before, before I tell you, I will have to go back to the pirate thing, because, so one of the dancers, Andrea Wilson, she's one of the people who I've kept you know, touch with throughout the years. And I'm a father of one and she's a mom. And when her daughter Maddie was a little toddler and my son was a little toddler, we would have little play dates and get together and all that stuff. But Andrea, um, being a close friend, uh, never missed the opportunity. And rightfully so, I would do the same to rib me about that pirate number (laughs) because I think I was so like, oh, I know what it was. We were rehearsing it. And when you rehearse the steps, at first, you do it without the music, just to say, this is where I'm going to be when this lyric happens. And this is where I'm going to be when that lyric happens. So I hear me, even though my voice wouldn't be singing on the show, it's Michael Cruz, like we talked about. And I just remember, like, I was, I could crawl in a hole. It was so embarrassing (laughs) being around these talented singers. And then here I am pretending. So uh, yeah, Andrea's a Andrea gives me a hard time about that, and I'm glad because <laughs> you should. Um, it came oh, out so. well, it came out well. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember being in a lot of crazy, really hot costumes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my favorite episode was so one of my roommates was an actor, and um, there was a script coming up called Riley's Millions, I think it was called. That's where Riley's old friend shows up and, um, you know, they both start lying to each other about how successful they are. You know, it turns out neither one of them have anything or whatever. That's not important and all that. Don't forget that message. Um, But uh, (laughs) uh, my roommate at the time uh, was my best friend. His name's Rad Daly. And he wasn't just an actor. He was also one of those tiger beat, tiger teen Mm -hmm. beat, guys like he was he had a nice following and I remember I only did this twice once with Rad Daly and once with Tony O'Dell who was on head of the class came to do our show um so but with Rad I um I approached Tommy about it because Gary was a sweetheart but I think Tommy was a little more approachable about things uh and I said what do you think about my roommate for whatever whatever and um uh Tommy's like absolutely let's have him into audition you know and it was great so Rag came in and and uh got the role um on his own merits because he's good Mm -hmm. but um you know um just happened to be my best buddy and my roommate so we did that show so we got to like play around a little bit on that episode I felt like I had someone you know bouncing off me my age or whatever doing some dialogue and um so I I think that was my one of my favorites um for me to do, I don't know if it was like, I don't really remember all the episodes. Like there were probably episodes that were done better that should be my favorite. And I, I was barely in it, you know, that are better episodes. But as far <laughs> well, as the experience goes, uh, that one. I, that's I, I, one of my favorite production numbers though, is no looking back now, the production number. Everybody that. just, was everybody a- was dressed up and yeah it was so good there was yeah. a convertible car on stage and andrea yeah. had a white boa and yeah. they all had these boas white or pink or something like that yeah. and um, yeah. yeah yeah i do remember that that was because a great I, was part of that number. I wasn't part of all the dance numbers right but i was part of that because they danced around us and singing and telling the story yeah um, yeah so brings back so much it's crazy <laughs> that was a great production number though one of my favorites yeah. Very pretty, very pretty. Well, cool. let's talk about the one you directed. Um, here's what I remember about this. Um, I should have planned in advance my trips. I actually left the day before you guys shot the concert numbers and the uh, had the rap party that day because you ended up doing the last one that got to stand alone. But I did get to come the day before and watch rehearsals. So that was very special to me because I actually got to watch you do your thing. And, 
but I want to know more about that episode. How, how did you go to Tommy and say, I want to direct or how did that all come about? Well, kind of, yes, that's kind of how it went, but it, there was a little, little more of a road to get to that. Mm -hmm. So, um, my agent started questioning whether or not I should go back for a fifth season. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should get into something else. And, um, I think what happened was as, as lovely as everyone is at Kids Inc., I think we declined to come back for season five. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went out with my friends to go shoot pool at this place in Westwood, California, or Brentwood, and it doesn't matter. And I ran into Kevin Berg, Kevin A. Berg. Here's a guy who was the PA the first season and then by the time fourth season came up, he was actually, he worked his way up to be one of the producers. Mm. And then he went on to produce in Living Color and many shows. And he's currently, and has been for many years, the vice president of CBS television. I did and not I, know that. And he was bringing people coffee, you know? Right, right. He, and, and he happens to be a neighbor. I see him at the market periodically. Great, great guy. Uh, so anyway, I went and I ran into Kevin while I was out. When uh, I don't drink, but I used to drink and I had a beer and it was, you know, I was of age at that point. And Kevin said, hey, and this would just happen today. He said, I hear you're not coming back. And I said, I know. I, yeah, it kind of breaks my heart, you know, because um, I, I would miss everybody. And he said, well, we don't have money. The budget is crazy. You know, it's a skeleton budget. Like, what would it take to have you back? And something came over me. And I threw it out there thinking there's no chance that this would happen. I said, I'd, I want to get into the Director's Guild of America. I'd love to direct one episode. Mm. And he said, you know, I don't know about that. But he, he said, I'm going to run it by Tommy and we're going to see. So then my agent calls me a few days later and said, that Tommy called and said, you know, we love Moosey, but you know, we don't just let anyone direct the show. And you know, he's right. So we had Tom Turbovich, Jeff Margolis, uh, Gary Halverson, Michael Dimmich. I mean, Gary Halverson, he directed a lot of the episodes of Friends. I think the final couple seasons, the Friends cast insisted that he be the, my, you know, the director yeah. who does the most, you know, yeah. per yeah. union rules. Uh, I mean, they had such talented directors. Why would they have this this guy, you know? And they and then I heard, you know, that was, you know, no, no. And then um, then I got a call from, I believe it was Tommy directly, and it wasn't my agent. The way I have it in my memory, and it was more like, hey, why don't you come in? Let's just talk. So apparently they started looking for soda jerk replacements and I guess they didn't really like anyone at the time. Although the two who came in after me, I thought were fantastic. I met one of them in person. He was such a great guy. Um, but anyway, like who cares? The kids are the stars anyway, you know, not, not, not the soda jerks. Um, but anyway, so let's talk about it. And so I came in and Tommy said, I want you to be the first person on the set I want you to be the last person to leave. I want you to they call it shadow, meaning basically just observe whatever, whoever's directing at the time, take as many notes as you can, sit in the booth. So we did a multi-camera show, four or five cameras, depending on what we're shooting. And it's a different situation than like, I went on to direct, I did Reba and not too much, like also another series on Comedy Central, but not, not a crazy amount, but um. But this type of directing is more like variety shows where you're in the booth and it looks like you're landing at 747. You may have been taken in there. It's like I ready. Have. Been in there once or twice. Yeah. Yeah. Ready camera three, three, ready one, yeah. one. You know, it's like, and you don't hear that out on the stage, but they're in there sweating it out and just, no, There's no. Like 30 monitors. Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I observed that for the whole season leading up to the last episode, which was the one I was given. And, um, Tommy is such a great guy and he, he, I knew what um, loops it took to jump through or strings to pull to get somebody into the DGA mm -hmm. and he did it for me. Wow. And I'm, I'm very grateful. Michael Dimmich signed my DGA application and one other person on Kids Inc. And then I walked across to where they were shooting 
general hospital on the same lot and had who and I got talked my way onto their set and asked the director if he'd be the third <laughs> and final signature for me because no other directors were around. Wow. Uh, and I got to the DJ um, through Kids Inc. And I'm so grateful for it. And then I don't know how it happened. Season six went back. I remember going back in to meet with Tommy. And I think I think the writing was on the wall. I was more interested in directing. I mean, I would come back as Riley. I wanted to do more. And he was wiser than that and knew, well, if I have Gary Halverson and Michael Dimmich and all these other people, why do I need to have him as a director? <laughs> and then they weren't as under the gun, I think. They had more time to find another soda jerk. And they did. And it was like, thank you, Kid Zink. I love you. And it was great. And I visited one day after I was on. I was working on the lot on some other show. And Kid Zink was on that show. Now, we moved around in the five seasons. Yeah. We'd work on over this studio and another studio. So I didn't know where they were. But I, I had heard that they were on the lot. I mean, I think I saw a sign for Kids Inc. Parking or something for oh, one wow. of them. Like, oh my gosh, I got to go over and say hi because I still have a lot of friends and basically they're a family to me and you know, the parents, yeah. the kids. Yeah. I didn't know some of the new kids like that was like I left just before Jennifer Love Hewitt, I believe, mm. and a couple others, you know, but I knew the and Stacy was there mm -hmm. and the crew and I got I went onto the set and saw Michael Dimmich and it was just a nice little reunion, lots of hugs and I met God, I'm going to hate myself. Is it, um, was it Chip? Flip. Guy, Flip. What's that? His name was Flip. F-L-I-P. Flip. And Sean like, O'Reardon. O'Reardon, I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, and we, we had a nice talk. I remember shaking his hand and like, you know, it was kind of a pass the torch moment. Not that I, you know, whatever. He could take my advice and throw it in the trash can, but, but he was super nice. And we were, it was cool. I'm like, listen, you know, whatever the rundown was like Tuesdays is your easy day, uh, <laughs> and, you know, whatever. And, you know, and, uh, those kind of things. And, uh, I remember that being a cool moment to meet him, uh, cause yeah. five years when you're that young is a long time. Like, oh, that was, gosh, yeah. Yeah. you know, I said five years, but it was five summers. It wasn't right. all year long each year, right. but, uh, yeah. It's still a huge chunk of time, you know, still. Yeah. Busy. Yeah. I got to tell you. So um, I'm not really an actor anymore. I do a lot of voiceover stuff. I'm working mm -hmm. on something now and now it's all good. I'm very grateful. Um, but I, my, my passion is directing and all that stuff, but I still, because of my past, I have what you may have heard of as the actor's nightmare, which is most actors always have this dream. Like they're on stage <laughs> and they, they forget their lines. Right. Or the other one is you're late and you're trying to, you know, you can't be late to production. Right. You're holding right. up so much and it's costing so much money, all that stuff. And I, I remember for years, I would have these anxiety dreams and I'm still on Kids Incorporated because I, that's when I moved out. I was on my own and it was sometimes, you know, I, I wasn't late, but boy, did I go, you know, boy, did I hustle to get there, you know, on yeah. Hollywood freeway and everything. Yeah, um, but yeah, I would for a long time. I'd have these periodic uh, um, anxiety dreams about being late to Kids Inc. That's uh, hilarious. But yeah. not only I, I just went back and rewatched this episode, um, the one you directed, and not only did you have your normal coworkers mm. to boss around, if you will, but I just realized that Tommy and Gary and the crew are actually in that episode. They were. Was yes, that they... added weight on your shoulders? Like I've got to direct Tommy and Gary and like and their and kids. Kids, yeah. Yeah. Um, it wasn't necessarily added weight. Gosh, I never thought of that. But now maybe Tommy's not yelling at me over my back. You know, <laughs> you know, he's on the stage. <laughs> Kidding. He wasn't a yeller. He was a very high energy. Uh, I loved his story. I, I learned from your interview. I learned about him, more about him than I knew about. Yeah, yeah. I knew he went to the Don Kirshner rock, rock concert. But when he, his name wasn't on the list and he went and grabbed some boxes and said he had a delivery, that's right out of a Almost Famous movie. You know, yeah. the movie Almost Famous. It's right yeah, out of yeah. like just kind of getting in there. Yeah, I admire that. I admire him. Um, and the fact that so $100,000 is a lot of money, should be to anybody, but it, it, it's all, you know, relative. Like, so the fact that, because he, he said this, I didn't realize that Kids Incorporated was made for $100,000 an episode. I, that's crazy. That's, 
I don't know how we, I don't know how they fed us. I mean, that's just insane. Um, hat, tip of the hat to those guys. Um, but yeah, it was, it may have been, pre- I don't remember at the time, there was a lot going through my head during that week of directing that episode because it was my first professional. I've directed some theater before that, uh, but it was my first professional experience. Um, and I learned so much. I had always been interested in that. So I, I, I had always been shadowing or, or observing other directors long before Kids Incorporated. It was like, right. I kind of knew that that's, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but to get everyone, I remember it was an episode, Tony O'Dell did that episode. Um, and, uh, there was a final number beach number or something, and then everybody was in it. Um, one thing I could tell you on the technical end, I learned was our, our art director, the great, uh, Jimmy Cuomo, he came over to me and he said, Moosey, is that, is that your master shot? I said, yeah, I think so. And he's like, and he was like, not approving of it. And I realized okay, he's the art director. You know, the set is a big deal. He's an award-winning art director for a reason. Right. I'm not, the master shot's not showing all his work. And that was like such an invaluable moment. You know, I I remember going over to say, I'm sorry, and I fixed it, and thank you. Um, Yeah. But um, yeah, and you know, like everybody, it was a well-oiled machine by that point, you know, season five. So it wasn't a brand new thing where we're just, you know, if we had a snag, we knew how to get past it because we've been there before. Right, right. So, you know, everyone's doing their job. And I really feel like, um, you know, when it was my turn to direct the show, the people were in my corner because we were close and there was no, you know, I, I didn't have any contentious relationships with people there. We were all friends. We're all equals and we're all in it together. And um, so I felt a lot of support. It was a great positive experience. I felt that way when I visited. Like I just everybody yeah. knew what they were supposed to do. Everybody did it well. Yeah. And everybody was happy. And even just having you there as the audience and and as I remember more and more fans came to sit in the audience. And just having you there talking to everybody, it was so nice. So I'm so glad you were there, you know. Oh, thank you. I, I sat at the counter more than once when I was in the audience and it was just so great to be there and you actually felt like you were like on the show, you know, like, so <laughs> right. it was really, I'm well, so Thanks glad for you were saying there. that. I do yeah. remember you very well. You're one of the top kids, in, if not the top number one fan of, Aww, of the show. Thank you. Um, thank you. And you said, it, when I, when you had a, uh, when I, I saw that you had a podcast and I started to listen to it, you told a story about did I greet you to you come came, in? Yes, yes. Do you remember in the fourth season, the trailers were outside? Like it just depended on the studio where sometimes you guys were inside. This one, they were all outside. It was, I think it was called VPS and it was tiny. And like, so your guys' trailers were out and uh, Ryan had invited us. And so we're walking in. And just as we pulled up to park on the curb, you came to go to your trailer. And you were like, oh, well, you must be Susan. And I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> like, Riley knows my name. <laughs> you know? like, so, no, I remember you did. Right. Oh, that's awesome. I, I was happy. It made me yeah. smile to hear you say that. Um, yeah. I, I don't specifically remember the moment, but I mean, right. um, it, and it's, I think it's good that I don't remember it because it wasn't unusual. You know, we're yeah. all, yeah. you know, so I, I, my mom always kept my feet on the ground, like, you might be on a show and then one of your friends or somebody, you know, isn't on a television. Right. You know, better, you're no worse, you know, like we're people, we're, you know, so there was never any kind of, Ooh, those are outsiders come coming onto our set. There never should be. And I, I, I kind of, um, I remember trying to pass along these, these notions to some of the kids on the show mm-hmm. when they were, when they were little, like, you know, Hey, this is, you're on Kids Inc. That's fantastic, but it's not forever and you're a human being and, you know, we're all, you know, like yeah. keep your feet on the ground. And, and, and I just, I remember everyone being that way. Like a lot of times after the taping, you guys would stay and take pictures with people and, yeah. you know, never once was there an agent or anyone who had to be the bad guy coming out and saying, it's time for them to leave. You know, they always, 
a lot of times people will send out the bad guy and you guys yeah. never did that. You guys always stayed and took pictures. That's great. And, That's great. Yeah. I'm glad it was a positive um, experience or you have a great um, association with that time. Absolutely. So There's still more with Moosey to come in episode six of the Kids Inc. podcast. So in the meantime, be good to others, be good to yourself, and may the joy, excitement, hope, and magic that was Kids Incorporated Find a way into your life every day. See you next time. Hey, guys, we would love for you to check us out on social media. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see more of. You can find us at facebook.com forward slash Kids Inc. Podcast, twitter.com forward slash Kids Inc. Podcast, and Instagram.com forward slash Kids Inc. Podcast. Hope to see you there. If you have any questions for Moosey or any other Kids Inc. cast members, please email us at kidsincpodcast at gmail.com.